Hi, my name is Eric Keller, and I'm filming this video uh, as part of the uh, question and answer session for 3D World Magazine for this issue. And the uh, the question I'm going to address is, uh, how can I make rocks tumble as they roll down a hill using n particles? Um, so to do this, or to demonstrate this, I'm going to take advantage of a new attribute that was added to n particles in my 2011, and this is uh, a per particle uh, rotational. Uh, attribute uh, and it's very useful uh, when using instances or instancing geometry to n particles. So to start off with the scene I created a, uh, a scene called n particle boulders start so this is what the scene looks like and I have a very simple polygon slope that I just modeled very quickly I made sure that it had uh, some nice lumps on it so we have things that uh, can interact with the n particles and cause them to bounce around as they roll down the hills and uh, then I've created some simple polygon boulders. Uh, notice that the boulders are all somewhat round in shape. Remember that the bouncing effect is going to be uh, applied to the end particles, which are perfectly round and not to the geometry itself. So I have something that's more squarish or something like that. It might not look quite as realistic. So I kept them fairly round. And notice that they're also all the same size. And this is because I'm going to handle randomizing the size of the, uh, of the boulders using the end particles and not the original geometry itself. Uh, I've applied different shaders to each boulder just so that uh, as I start to randomize how these are instanced to the end particles I can make sure that the randomization is occurring uh, accurately and uh, it's not leaving anything out. If these are all gray it gets kind of a little bit hard to tell the difference between each one when they're moving. So this will, this is just basically a visual aid. Later on you can always replace it with a shader or something like that. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to set these rocks here to the origin. So I'm just going to set the translate x, y, and z to zero. So you can see now that they're or at the origin. I'm going to put the origin behind the slope here so that uh, we don't see the original instances during the effect. But of course you could also hide them if you wanted to. Uh, I do have a camera set up in this scene. So that's what the camera angle is going to look like. And I'm going to hide the grid. So let's go back to perspective and let's, let's make create uh, an emitter. So I'm switching to the end dynamics menu set. And I'm going to end particles. And the first thing I'm going to do is set the style of the end particles. This is basically a starting preset for the attributes of the end particle. Makes uh, working with them a little bit faster. So I've set this to balls, which works perfectly for boulders. And then I'm going to do create emitter. And let's take a look at the options. I'm going to use a volume emitter. Set the rate to about 5, it's a good starting place because I don't want too many boulders. For the other attributes, the volume shape, I'm going to stick with a cube and I'm going to set away from center to 0 and all this to 0. And I can always change these in the attribute editor once the, uh, once the emitter has been created. So I'll create the emitter and select it and scale it up. Set this to 50 just so I can see what it looks like. Make it nice and long, and something like that. And then I'm going to put it above the slope, the polygon slope here. Let's take a look through our shot cam, and it's out of view of the camera, which is what I want. So I don't see end particles appearing out of thin air. Yeah, I think that's probably good. And I'm going to set this, make sure that the timeline sends something to like 800 so that you can see the, the whole effect. I think the default value is like 24, so uh, just change that. And I'm just going to play the simulation. don't see much happening, and that is because the end particles are very small. So you can see them right there. So let's uh, increase their size. So I'm going to open the attribute editor to the end particle shape tab, and I'm just going to get a starting size something like that kind of close to uh, you know what our what our uh, rock size is there's the rock right there here's the size of the end particles so I might make them just a little bit smaller and play the simulation now you can see that they're falling gravity is being applied to them and what I might do is maybe move this up just a little bit So there they go. Now they're falling down. So the next thing I want to do is select this slope geometry. 
and uh, create this, make this a, a passive collider. So again, in the end dynamics menu set, I'm going to go to end mesh and do create passive collider. So uh, let's uh, let's just play that and see how it looks. Now I can see they're starting to bounce down the slope. So if I take a look from the shot cam, we get this kind of thing. It's looking pretty good so far. So I could do things like, um, you know, increase, you know, select the slope itself and establish uh, how bouncy we want to make this. I imagine this is a kind of a rocky slope, so I'll increase the bounce just a little bit and the friction. I'm going to leave the stickiness down to zero. And there we go. just a little bit higher that's looking pretty good okay so let's uh, instance the geometry to the end particle object I'm going to shift select my rocks rocks one through six command or control select end particle I'm on a Mac so I'm using command here and then, uh, as you can see, that's what it looks like here. And in end dynamics, I'm just going to go end particle, instancer, geometry replacement. And here is our instancer node right here. So you can see that there are the rocks that I selected. So uh, if you'll notice that these are labeled 0 through 5, that's how they are instanced. If I play the uh, simulation right now, see that the geometry is not showing up so let's take the end particle object and I'm going to go down to shading and set opacity to zero and now I'm going to wonder why I don't see my instance geometry there we go For some reason the uh, high quality rendering is not showing up the instance geometry um, so let's try that again okay so here we go now we can see our boulders coming down so the first thing you'll notice is that they're all essentially the same boulder uh, which is not what we want we want to randomize um, so what I'm going to do is select the end particle node go to the attribute editor I'm going to create a custom attribute on the end particle shape node so that I can easily randomize the um, the assignment of each rock geometry, each instance to the uh, to each particle. So it's going to be a per particle attribute. So let's go to the per particle array attributes here in the end particle shape node. So go down here to add dynamic attributes, and press general, and I'm going to call this a nice obvious name like rock index, and it's going to be per particle array attribute, and I'm also going to set this to float. Um, technically, the index is actually an integer value, but when you set this to per pet, when you set this to per particle, you only have a choice between float and vector. But don't worry, Maya will know how to do that. And then I'm going to press OK. That closes that, and we can see I have rock index right here. So I just need to create a very simple expression to randomize the rock index. So I'm going to choose. I'm going to right-click over the field next to rock index and choose creation expression. And the expression is just going to be, I could just you know, copy this, paste it down here, just did command C and command V to paste that down there. And I'm just going to do, whoops, rock index equals rand. You could do 0, comma, 6, or actually, you, to be a shortcut, you could just do 6 in parentheses. And this means that Maya knows to randomize values between 0 and 6. The reason I'm setting this to 6 and not 5 is basically um, when, when it random when Maya creates the uh, random values, it's going to choose random values between zero and up to five, uh, and that if you remember the um, index values are zero to five. 
but if I only go from 0 to 5, then I'm basically going to get random values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It might not get up to 5, so therefore I'm just doing 6. So it goes between a value of 0 and 6. And I just lost my expression, so let me bring that back. Since I switched nodes there, I lost my expression. Um, so let me do that again. Creation expression. Control C, Control V equals rand six. If I just put six in parentheses, my knows that I mean between zero and six. So just do create and close and rewind. And let's play now, and we can see it's not working. So why is it not working? Well, we need to tell the instancer which attribute to use in order to create the index. So once again, while I'm in the end particle shape node. I'm going to go down to Instancer and select Object Index and choose Rock Index. And you can see it already starts to randomize. So I'll rewind and now we'll see. Get a nice random assortment of folders.